<laughs> Welcome everyone. Uh, this is That Sewing Blab and we're thrilled that you can join us. This is Dawn Pengali from Doing Designs and my co-host for the evening is the amazing Alethea from So Much Talent. You probably recognize her. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And tonight we're discussing refashioning. I'm very, very excited about this. Um, it's a fantastic topic. If you think about all the things you hear on the news and everything about the environment and this and that, it's getting me thinking more and more about refashioning, not only refashioning maybe from a thrift store, but also thinking about the things that you're in your own closet, more of that, you know, make do and mend kind of mentality that we used to have quite a bit in the past, I think we'll start coming back into play. So uh, mm -hmm. for those of you who don't like to go to thrift stores, you can use your own patterns that you already have with clothes you already have. You might do an Octon cami out of a dress shirt. You can piece together another one of your favorite patterns. So there's lots of different things we can discuss tonight and we're thrilled that Alethea is joining us. Um, you probably know Alethea, she is from So Much <laughs> Talent. She founded this amazing group full of talented strong inspiring women so and men and um we're thrilled that they um that they're collaborating with us this month so we have you for two shows we have you yeah. this week for refashioning in two weeks time we're going to focus more on alterations so really looking forward to that i did want to mention really quickly that if you missed last week's show, um, we talked to the Silver 50 ladies. It was a fantastic show. They're entirely talented and lovely. Um, the replay for that will be up on YouTube in about a month. So check out that. And you will find now that there, um, anyone can watch the live shows, but the replays uh, will be delayed a little bit. because more time for editing and other things. So yes, <laughs> Alethea. I am thrilled that you're here. How is it going so far on the So Much Talent? Because this month you're doing a special challenge, aren't you? We are. Actually, it falls right in line with um, what we're doing here. And it's refashioning and alteration. So it's, it's kind of hand in hand, you know, altering stuff, making, turning something into something different, you know, so it's kind of the same. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're doing this month, alterations and refashioning. So I'm excited. We did the um, alterations challenge, I think, earlier on in the year. Um, or no, we did refashioning earlier on in the year, I think in February. And uh, that was a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, we get to do it again. I, I think it is. It really stretches your creativity. I mean, it, it, you can be creative when you have the fabric and all the fabric and even extra fabric. Sometimes I get extra fabric just in case, but when you really don't have that wiggle room, um, it, sometimes it forces you to come up with something that you wouldn't have imagined at the beginning. So very, very fun. So true. And that's what we, that's the whole point behind it all, you know, it's, and with the rest of the challenges as well is to stretch your imagination, you know, because we get so locked into sewing, you know, clothes, sewing patterns, sewing, you know, inspiration works. But this, the, it gives us the opportunity to think outside the box. So I'm excited about it. Yes. And we're very lucky this evening. We're going to have other, uh, some other ladies join us. We love you, lovely Elizabeth Fire from Elizabeth Made This. Um, she's been on the show lots before. She's one of the admins from So Much Talent. And she's going to come on and, and talk about refashioning. Now, if you've seen her stuff, you've seen how she manipulates fabrics, puts things together. She throws awesome in a blender and it comes out even more awesome. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because that, that is what we have dubbed her, the fabric manipulator, because she takes like a wad of something or nothing and make it into something fabulous on the uh, sewing retreat, which we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, later, but she did some amazing stuff. So I can't wait for y'all to see it. I can't wait for y'all to talk with Elizabeth because she, I mean, if you've been following her for some time, you know how she does stuff, you know? So yeah, I'm looking forward to picking her brain. <laughs> yeah, yes, I will invite her on right now. Um, and then after Elizabeth talks, Alethea is going to share some pretty cool stuff with us. <laughs> and then we have the other admin, um, Tisa, is going to come on camera. And I almost invited Tisa by accident <laughs> first. <laughs> so I invited Elizabeth on. And, um, yeah, she's going to share some stuff with us. So if you haven't seen Elizabeth's website, it's Elizabeth Made This. 
you guys caught me you guys caught me in between pictures i was i was trying to grab a couple more shots for my book tomorrow <laughs> multitasking <laughs> well welcome to the show elizabeth yeah thanks for having me always good to be here and talk with you guys so yeah so when you hear refashioning what do you think of elizabeth uh my weird fabric store <laughs> No, that that's my affectionate term for for my local thrift store. Um, <laughs> my affectionate term for my local thrift store, but yeah, I, I think refashioning is just it's all about using whatever it is that you have, whether it's in your closet or you just find you know something out of the scrap bin or uh, just old clothes in general. And just just making it go as far as you possibly can. And you know, just I'm so glad you guys talked about how having those those limits on you just absolutely expands your creativity. I love that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the women I met this weekend was uh, well, I know her Anne from Anna Christina Sos was saying it's even great for waters. So those things that you've made and they just yeah. did not work out, and you throw it in the corner and you're like I never want to see that again mm -hmm. um that, you know pull them out they you can you know bring new life into them mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and it can be you know and then sometimes it can be a way to redeem that that project too you can have better feelings about it you know if you can make something out of it so right yeah exactly well, it kind um, of goes to that saying one man's trash is another man's treasure but your own trash can be your treasure absolutely <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it just takes a little bit of thinking to uh, turn that little piece around and make it out of something fabulous. Even if it's using it for the kids, the grandkids, the dog, you know, you yeah. can turn turn something into, turn nothing into something. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So we have some pictures. Um, <laughs> oh, pardon? Oh, I would, Alicia reminded me because I, I went and grabbed the book. I, re I read the Seth of Retreat, but... It's it's about Joseph and he had a little overcoat and he moved he he turns it through the, the course of the book the overcoat just goes down down this down the life cycle of the stuff and so he ends up having a button and then he lost it and now he has nothing <laughs> so then the author says so Joseph made a book out of it which goes to show that you can always make something out of nothing so I right think that, <laughs> that was an awesome story, story by the way. In yeah. the storybook. So. <laughs> That's fabulous. Um, I do have some photos that Elizabeth was kind enough to share with us too, and they will inspire you, as does um, her blog, because she is one very talented woman. So um, this really quickly is a quick view of her blog. So definitely check it out. You will you will learn lots. I can guarantee it. Now, can you maybe tell us a little bit about what you see uh, um, on the screen? Okay, so I've got so those were two two sweaters that I made. They're my little grandpa cardigans, <laughs> but uh, I both of them are made from two different two different sweaters, and I just I cut them up and repiece them all together so I get all of those chevron stripes. I almost that this the coral the coral and tan one is almost right, but I, I messed up cutting the sleeve and so this the chevrons go not the way I want them to on one sleeve. I'm like, ah, oh, it was almost perfect, but that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, yep, yeah, those are both those are both some sweaters and yep. Yeah, I sliced and diced and Julian fried them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, did you use your own buttons for that? Were they buttons from one of the cardigans or? Yeah, the, the, the ivory and blue one are uh, buttons actually from a different sweater. I had, I had a sweater, a ready to wear sweater, I mean, years ago, like right after college. And I just, I wore it to pieces, but it had these beautiful, like cool buttons on it. So I always saved those buttons, not really realizing that sewing was going to be my thing forever. <laughs> so I don't know, somewhere in the back of my mind, I, I, I was, I was being smart. <laughs> Why you, so those are that. And then the other, the other buttons were just in my, in my jar. I actually could use another button on the other one, but whatever. <laughs> there was your inner that. fabric manipulator that was speaking already. That inner man knew you were coming up and gonna need that. So they said, save those buttons right now. 
Well, I mean, if they're nice buttons, then always, <laughs> always go for the buttons. And that's and I will I, I will encourage everybody, even if you don't think you're gonna go and start being like a super refashionista kind of thing, go hang out at the thrift store and look for buttons because you will find so many better buttons at there than you will elsewhere and you won't pay that much money for them too. You will be there will be so much happy dancing that you will be doing when you find those cool buttons, I promise. <laughs> and I've also found that sometimes it's just a matter of there's something there that has potential, but it just has ugly buttons on it. And even just taking <laughs> off the buttons is something and putting more interesting buttons or buttons that don't clash with it can give it a whole new life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Or paint them. Ooh. Right. <laughs> or paint them. Yeah. So uh, if for those of you that don't know, uh, Elizabeth is famous for painting, repainting. Like, <laughs> though, I don't know if you have those shoes near you, but the shoes that you sure. wore uh, for the retreat, she painted these shoes, y'all. And I mean, her I don't, Her mind is going all these places that I don't even think to go. And it's nothing for her to take some paint and just slap it on a piece of fabric and voila, it's like she got this magic wand or something. It's probably not gonna look at the window. Actually, let, me, let me close the blind here for a second. Oops. But I like how she takes, uh, she sees things in the thrift stores. It's not just items like sweaters or whatnot, but she sees everything as fabric, you know, usable fabric. And so a little bit better. It makes a little difference. So yeah. they're they're kind of an orchid color. But and they actually don't they have did you have a design on them? The, you know what? I just I just made really rough brush strokes because I wanted several different colors of, of the purple. So yeah. Okay. Okay. It's, kind of a, it's just a brush technique. Yeah. Okay. I thought that was so cool, but it went really cute with the outfit that you had on. So I mean it's just like from head to toe. <laughs> So um, this is both of these are fabulous kind of examples. Like I think you call them next level examples of the, the fact that you don't need to just downsize something. You can take a couple of things that you have in your wardrobe, sweaters. You can take a, a crew neck and get a turtleneck sweater from another one that you're not wearing and put the two of them together. Like it doesn't have to be uh, the only way you can piece two thrift items together is to make it look like a quilt. You know, like it doesn't have to be patchy you can do like like chevrons. You can just mm -hmm. use a you know top half of one, the bottom half of another to give it new life. So we went from chevrons um, to the next one, which is not as similar as chevrons. We got some fun happening here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so much funness. Okay, so actually, that is that is if you can believe it, underneath all of those crazy pom poms, is it's uh, it is a it's a thrifted sweater. So it is technically a refashion because I did have to re I, I did have to, to shape the sweater so that so that it fit me the way I wanted it to fit me before I started adding on the pom poms because that sweater is actually probably about eight pounds <laughs> by the time <laughs> I, I added everything on there. It's actually no sew, but I made I made every last one of those pom poms and yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> it's really fun. Do I see the Grinch in there? Uh, probably. Like two yeah. red buttons, the, not the Grinch, but what's his name? The uh, on Sesame Street, the Groucho, the little oh. trash can. <laughs> well, Do you know what I'm talking about? Oscar the Grinch. <laughs> Oscar, Oscar. Yeah, I see his little face in there. <laughs> and then the, the, the red dress is uh, for my daughter, and that was from another dress that I had, and I just never really wore that dress. I don't wear red. So <laughs> it turned, it, it I, I used it for something and it just wasn't what I wanted it to be. So I, so I just, I drafted that for her and yeah. So it's still got youth and she likes red. So there you go. <laughs> so for that um, thrift, did you um, take your dress and then make pattern pieces for her? So they're actual pattern pieces and you just used the dress as like fabric or did you take the shape of the dress and like uh, downsize it? No, I, 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 I drafted, I drafted, I drafted a whole pattern for that and then just used my dress as, as, as fabric. And that is one thing about refashioning that it is kind of surprising is that even though you start out with, you know, however much you have, 
you can go and make a, a children's garment out of it and end up with actually not a whole lot of fabric left over. You kind of think like, where did it go? <laughs> but it's uh, it's just kind of a weird thing. And it's, it has to do, I think, with the, the width of, of the fabric that you're dealing with most primarily. So it's it's a funny, it's a funny business. There's some yeah. fun math and refashioning. <laughs> So let me ask you, Elizabeth, what's your inspiration when you are you inspired by the fabric first or are you inspired by a design and then go look for fabrics, go fabric shopping in the thrift stores? How what take us yes. through your, how, your, how do you do that? Both, both, both. both. There, there's times when I, when I when I will go in there with a specific challenge in mind. Like I'll say I'm I'm going to make I've got this idea for for a color blocked dress. And I need to find this kind of this kind of material to, to go for it, and this kind of material, and what can I what can I find? Um, and then there's other times when I'll look at like those those chevron sweaters. I, that was a oh I'm gonna mess it up. It was a design. It was a, it was a really high end designer um, that that I saw I saw that idea from, and I, I thought I thought it was just really really cool. So I just wanted to to try and recreate it on my own and not spend you know. Eight hundred dollars. I'm not going to spend eight hundred dollars on a sweater, but you know, it's just fun. It's fun to go and like take some of those ideas and kind of translate them down into. I. I it's just. It was really interesting construction, to be honest. So I just wanted to go for the construction because it was cool. <laughs> uh, you've recently been inspired by a particular artist that that inspired some of your work that you shared on the retreat. Uh, was it Frida Cabo or? Oh no. Okay. There was a particular designer that you called out and I think she inspired one of your designs. You actually did a patchwork pieces with some art. It was an artist. It's one of your jackets that you made, uh, that you created. And you said you were inspired by this designer. There's so many It'll jackets. It'll come, so many jackets. <laughs> It'll come to you. This one, you actually took some of the fabric from this artist. This artist, particular artist, she liked to do stuff, but instead she used some of her designs in fabric. It'll I'm, come to you. I'm totally blanking right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm totally blanking. You'll probably see it come up. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I know what you're talking about. Okay. All right. So, oh, Vera. Vera. So Vera Newman, she was a, she was a, a, a painter. In the in the, the mid century, basically, and she she made all these beautiful floral prints, and she would put them. She instead of selling selling her paintings one off, she would put them on all kinds of home goods, you know, tablecloths, linens, scarves, especially. She's got tons and tons of beautiful beautiful scarves, and I found some of her napkins. And I had, I had a trench coat and mm -hmm. I, saw, I saw a Valentino co trench coat that had these beautiful, like gigantic floral appliques on it. And I was like, that is cool. I'm going <laughs> to, I don't have giant florals. And so I, 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 rum I rumbled through all my stuff because it was for a challenge or something. I don't know. And, and I was using linen for this coat and the, the napkins were linen. So, and they had these huge, beautiful, giant flowers on them. So I thought, yeah. hey, winning all over <laughs> so I, I, I use that but yeah i i love her stuff she there's lots of vera in my house <laughs> <laughs> oh very good too um we have a couple other um photos of some of the things that you've made some of them that's well i've seen all of them and they're just gorgeous i was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about some of them as well okay so uh i'm gonna go i'm gonna go well i'll, I'll start i'll start left and i'll go right because that's how most people look at me. So the 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 olive jacket is it started out as a just a French terry sweatshirt. Nothing really particularly interesting about it except that it had these really cool studs all over it, which were fun, kind of fun. Those ended up being kind of a hassle for me because as I was cutting it into the bomber jacket that it is now, I had to I had to take pliers and, and take off the studs so that I could actually sew it. But I didn't have, I didn't, when you go to refashion a, a sweater, there's very limited amounts of ribbing. And I actually, you can see that the jacket itself is cropped, which is fine. Like that, I, that's kind of what I was hoping for. But to get that extra length, to get to make that ribbing, and so that I could actually get 
colored ribbing out of it. I, I pieced all the available ribbing that I could get off it, plus some other random scraps of stuff with <laughs> that that coral kind of light light coral ponty. So it made it made the little stripes there. So it was kind of a way for me to use every last little scrap of that fabric. <laughs> <laughs> And then the um, the middle the middle dress is it's just, it's a shirt dress and it's from it's from two men's men's shirts uh, the the lighter the lighter colored one is a linen and then the other one is just is just a it's just a plaid and the it color blacks actually all the way around the entire thing so between those panels and it's hard to see on that particular picture but. Some of the some of the panels are I block printed a, a with a with a dress stamp, so it's a it's a it's kind of it's kind of silly that it's a dress stamp on a shirt dress, but you know, that is really cute. Now you said you use those are men's shirts, right? Those are men's shirts. Yeah. All right. I saw a comment that Anita. I don't know if Anita's still on here. Uh, Anita Mars, but she yeah. was saying she wanted to get into refashioning. So she can refashion some of her husband her husband's shirts. So that's a great idea for uh, yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the, the the one on the right is a it, it's just a little sweater that I made. I saw an Athleta top that I thought was really cool. I don't know why I got the Athleta catalog. I don't buy their stuff, but I did one time and I opened it up and I saw that and I saw that particular top and I was like, that's really cool. So it has a it has a double layer on the back side of it, and I I took I took a French terry on the outside and I put a little zipper down the back of it and it, it zips up and unzips to reveal an under layer of lace and the lace was from uh, from another sweater, and then on the front side of it we can't see that from that picture, but I took I took some of an applique of of one of the the lace motifs and just put that on the on the sweater itself too, and then there's really cool cuffs. From that, from that I, like too, so. yeah. I like that one. It's cute. Oh, very cute. So creative too, and mm -hmm. so very you. Like you definitely um, have a, a color palette palette that suits you, and you know exactly what it is. I mean, even in these next group of photos, you can see it as well. So I guess you have to keep that in mind when you go to the thrift store as well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I I I I gravitate towards those colors. I think it's actually really easy to find stuff when you you work from a consistent color palette because then you can just, you know, your eyes naturally gonna go towards those colors and you can just scrap the rest, you know? <laughs> Not totally, but sort of. But sort of. So it's a lot faster. So the that sweater is actually I have it here. It is from the body of it is a cashmere sweater and then and then I took other pieces of that the there's a white stripe down the middle that's from another cashmere sweater and then there's strips of just woven fabric and I fringed the edges of those and made them into these little kind of L shapes on the front on the front of the cardigan. Um, and then the the cardigan on the right is from again two two more cashmere sweaters the first the outer one was a really like thick tall like up to here turtleneck <laughs> and i i sliced it down the middle and added a contrast band and i and i used another vera scarf and <laughs> and added that that little stripe contrast that's the border of the scarf on the, the underside of the button band and then one of those beautiful flowers of hers as an applique on the shoulder. I love that you have no in, inhibitions. You just go for it. And it's, I mean, do you ever have a moment where you think, oh, I shouldn't do this? Or is it, what is it going to look like? Have you trashed anything? <laughs> not, not, not really, not really. When I, sometimes, once in a while, I'll have, I think especially when I'm sewing from patterns, there'll be one that just, not happy, but pretty much, pretty much, I know, I know, because I can, I'll compare, I'll compare like my good solid patterns that I know fit me to mm -hmm. to the other ones, and if they're they're not happy, I don't touch the, I I don't even muslin it, um, so that that helps me too. So when I go to go refashion, I mean, pretty much, I'm just a, I'm just slicing and dicing everything, and it's just, 
I, I know what's going to happen at the end of it. It might get hairy in the middle, but I'll, I'll work it out. I'll work it out. That is so cool. I, I love your thought process and it just, everything you do. I mean, I just ooh and awed over everything I saw uh, during the retreat. I, I don't know if you're going to show any more of her stuff, but the jackets that you did, the trench coat, uh, the all of the stuff that you did was just, it looks like it ought to be in a specialty store somewhere. I mean, I mean, look like you can put a big price tag on this stuff because it's so unique. You know, it's very different. And like I said, you have no inhibitions. You just go for it and it all seemed to work. Yeah. Yeah. I And I'll, I'll sketch stuff too. I think that helps too, especially when I'm color blocking to mm -hmm. sketch, to catch, sketch stuff out. Cause a lot of times when you start slicing things like color blocking can look really different depending on which order you put things in. So if you can just, I mean, just make a big, ugly sketch and just <laughs> roughly put out where the colors are going to go, it can really, really help you. Like with that, that, that one, that men's shirt into a shirt dress thing, I really had to think about that one. And, and I, then I used my drawing as my cutting guide so that I could understand where things were going, <laughs> which wow. is helpful. I had to do but, that on, on my ice dye jacket too. That was, that was complicated. You gave a lot of us uh, a lot of um, inspiration, you know, mm -hmm. during that retreat. And we also walked away. Well, I didn't because I was hard headed. I didn't bring my skirt, my pant, my jeans with me. But a lot of the ladies brought their uh, jeans and you helped us all refashion some stuff. But do you think uh, you will ever do a uh, webinar or some kind of tutorial? Absolutely, absolutely. So right now I am I'm working on just building out my website, but it's my goal to, to just move towards having uh, courses available for people and just kind of like more live kind of teaching kind of stuff. So yes. Yay. Okay, work. awesome. Work. I'm <laughs> having awesome, a couple awesome. this year though. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> And okay. these are the, I think the, yeah, the last two photos that you sent us. Yeah. Um, so on, on the left is a, it's an apron and I made it for my skirt. So if I turn, if I turn my lady around there, uh, she'd be kind of backless, but you know, it's an apron. <laughs> wow. But I just, I saw that, I saw that print and I was like, this is fabulous. This is really, really great. But as a skirt, it's it's not a skirt that I would wear. I think that's a, that's a print that's really like it's it's very much out there. So you know, it. I have a hard time wearing printed skirts. It's not my thing, but I love them. I think they're beautiful. So I set myself a challenge. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make an apron out of a skirt, and I did that, and I did a full tutorial on my website, and actually put the. It, it's just a little tiny little pattern, that's that's up for my newsletter subscribers for that for that one so that's that's that one that's that one and then the right is my bat jams so <laughs> i talked about my crazy jams for my kids and <laughs> the, the idea behind them is that the old the old crazy quilt you know where you have just scraps of this and that and stuff together you put them together and boom you got a quilt so i do that with for pajamas for for my kids so I have this that that bat fabric there that I got from Peekaboo Pattern Shop, and they have a really really great selection of of kids fabric, but um, it's more it's I wouldn't I wouldn't shop there just for it would be too expensive for me personally to buy just all my yardage there for that stuff. So what I do instead is I mix it, I buy a little bit of it, and then I mix it with some other fabrics. So those two are recycled from T-shirts. So I sorry, the colored ver the colored parts of, of those those tops are from uh, T-shirts that I got for my kids' school. So we, they have like these one-off kind of events, and mm -hmm. they wear the T-shirt for the day, and then that T-shirt is in their drawer forever, and they're not that great of T-shirts. <laughs> I don't think. I mean, they're not stylish. I should say they're not stylish. So I turn them inside out, and I and I use the fabric inside out. And and then I just I put the sleeves up in there and then I and then I made the little the little bat logo the bat logo in there so Aww, yeah that is too cute really fun wow so 
so that's he has some happy boys. Oh, very much, very much. But <laughs> that's kind of like where where I usually go is that uh, I don't even I I, I do I, I really look at other other things as sources of fabric. So I will mix yardage in with with recycled fabrics. Mm -hmm. kind of constantly I, I i don't even think about it anymore I'm like oh i'm gonna grab that color that's there i came from a weird shirt no problem <laughs> <laughs> awesome so mm -hmm. what's up next um elizabeth what do you have what's cooking in there now um i i've been i've been building out just various ideas for how to hack a raglan tea and i've got i have lots of those cooking in my brain. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm taking a break from it for the moment because I feel like, like a lot of those ideas are more leaning towards fall. And so nobody wants to wear like short sleeves, right? Or long sleeves right now. So <laughs> we'll just leave that for a couple of weeks and that's okay. <laughs> all right. Now, Alethea, you also have some things, some photos to share with us. So Elizabeth is kind of going to help to discuss your photos with me. <laughs> so uh, you were kind enough to share some photos about, and I, you see, I never thought about um, the way you refashion as refashioning, but oh my gosh, once I saw it, it was so brilliant. So maybe you can tell us a little about your refashioning. Okay. All right, so I a lot of the stuff that I do, I get to uh, refashion for my clients, and uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of you know that I am a um, I specialize in bridal and formal wear, so I create wedding gowns, I alter wedding gowns, prom dresses, all of the sorts. And so um, I have a lot of clients, you know, that come back to me. They return. So you you get married, you have this wedding gown. So what do you do with it after the fact? And it used to be a long time ago that. Um, like the veils you could refashion the veils a lot of the women would take the veils and use them as bassinet covers for the newborn babies and cool. stuff like that but then what do you do with the wedding gowns so um i had a client that asked me to turn her wedding gown into her baby's christening gown Aww. and so i do a lot of that um in this case this picture that you see right here this is a grandmother's gown and uh she wanted me to use her gown to create a christening gown an ensemble for her grandbaby and so here's the wedding gown it's not really a good picture but there's the wedding gown um i made the panties the booties and the uh hair piece so i either do a bonnet or um i'll do like a um but um a headband or something like that um and the booties i don't know if i said booties but uh it's a lot of fun this was actually the first one that I did. And so I was able to get save, salvage enough of her dress for her to wear for her one year anniversary. So we shortened the dress and we used the rest of it to create her, her um, baby girl's christening gown. There's the bonnet and the, uh, the booties. And then uh, there are some panties I think I created for her as well. Uh -huh. So I had a lot of fun doing it. And I don't think I, I sent you a picture of uh, one. Yeah, this was another one uh, that I did. I think this was the one that you just saw the first one. These are closer up pictures. Okay. Um, but this is, I love, I look at stuff like Elizabeth looks at the stuff in the thrift stores, fabric. <laughs> so when the wedding gown comes to me, I just see fabric. And so I try to use as much of the embellishments and you know, all the details on it to create a really cute um, ensemble for the baby. But these are the booties, of course, with little flowers, little florets that I made for it, uh, the headband. And I, I have the option or the opportunity to embellish it because a lot of my clients just, they put the gown in my hand and they say, just go for it. And so I get to do that. So everything that you see on this on this uh, christening gown is actually pieces and parts that actually came from wedding gown yeah and uh, there's another one that you probably do not have a picture of but the, the most odd request for uh, refashioning the wedding gown or um, repurposing it was to use it for a Christmas tree skirt now that made me a little nervous yeah it made oh, wow. me a little nervous. I should have had pictures that maybe next time 
Um, but yeah, that made me a little bit nervous to do that one. But it it was really cute. You know, it really came out nice. Well, it, it it already has all the all the beautiful embellishments on it, so it kind of makes sense. But yeah, that's cool. Well, it's a way of of, of keeping keeping this piece in the family. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes the sometimes wedding gowns are uh, used again. You know, a lot of the brides will take and use their mother's gowns uh, again after many years. Um, or they will do this, you know, so it's a way of keeping that item or that garment as a keepsake, you know, in the family, letting it just stay in the line, you know, so something to you, you asked Elizabeth what her process was. I'm really curious about yours too. Do you sketch it out first? Do you just like start unpicking the embellishments, put it out flat like fabric and then go from there? Like how, what's your process? Um, I look at the embellishments and I let the embellishments and the design of the gown kind of speak to me because if there's a lot of trim or a lot of um, uh, lace embellishments along the hem of the gown, then I know I have a lot of border to work with, you know, so I kind of work around the design of what's on the gown. So it, it tells me how much fabric I have to work with, uh, where I can get my embellishments from, you know, if I can create the bodice of the the baby's gown out of the bodice of the mama's dress, you know, all of those play into factors. So it depends on how the gown is made. That dictates how, you know, how I can use it. Very, very cool. Um, I just, I can't get over looking at the detail in it. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you take appliques off and move them or do you try and just kind of fussy cut everything? So it's all where you want it to be. Yeah, I try not, if I have to remove embellishments and, and shift them around, I will, but I do, I try to, as you say, fussy cut, and I try to see, you know, how I can use this piece and make the little panties work around the, the embellishments, you know, and then I add little stuff in, like on the top of it, um, you see, I added a little bow and uh, I cut a piece of the uh, applique out and added it to it. So it's just little details and designs like that. And um, I try to keep the integrity of the embellishments or whatever's on it and try to use everything that I can. Um, and I want to say that I used one one of the gowns for a little boy's uh, garment, a little boy's um, uh, two piece, the little pants and the little jacket. So I don't have pictures of that one. Yeah, so they get dressed too. <laughs> But it's such, I mean, the, the garments become like this living history, you know? Right, it's, it's exactly. So cool. That's so cool. Exactly. And, and that's the whole point, you know, like you said, to let it become history. So this is something that can literally be passed down from generation to generation to generation. You don't have to worry about size of it, you know, um, you can just pretty much transfer it, you know, and it will last, uh, last a lifetime. Uh, fantastic ideas yeah. really fantastic you two are so incredibly creative <laughs> well thank you Don thank you you're welcome um, so we have someone else we're going to invite on camera as well um, the other admin from so much talent is going to come on and we're going to have a little round table talk um, about refashioning so if you guys have any questions and I see there's two there um, this the four of us can answer them and hopefully inspire you a little. So we'll um, invite Tisa on. Tisa's been on the show before. She is fabulous, so creative. Like we sent her some fabric once and what she did with it, whoo, very creative. Very. Yes, it's great that she could join us. And it's lovely seeing everyone watching live. Hi. Hey, Dwayne and Anne and Anita and everyone. Hi, Tisa. Hi. Okay, ladies. Can you guys maybe give a couple of your top tips for refashioning? Uh, let's start with you, Tissa. <laughs> <laughs> My tip number one would be don't hold back. Whatever you, you set in your mind, whatever it is that you envision, put it out there. Don't let nothing um, stop you from your creativity because you never know what, when you're done, it's going to be a masterpiece. So, 
you know, that's my tip. (laughs) (laughs) I think I would probably have to say, um, turn your mistakes into something fabulous. You know, every mistake can be turned into something really good. You just have to use your imagination. Think outside the box. I think that's what, what I would say. Just stretch your imagination. Okay, I'll two two really quick ones. So if you see something and you have a hard time kind of getting your head around what it could possibly be, just fold it up and pretend that it was like yardage at, at, at the, the fabric store. And then just kind of like, you know, pet it like you would at the fabric store. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> when you divorce it, when you divorce it from what it, what it is hanging on the hanger, mm. it can kind of help your brain, sort of. Oh, you know. I like that. Yeah, that. I love that. Every fabric is editable. You can dye anything, with very little exception. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, that answers your question too. Somebody asked the question of what do you do? Can you refashion something? I think it's up further in the thread if it has a spot on it. And so we thought Elizabeth would be the perfect person to answer that because you just said it, you know, anything can be dyed, you know, you can Mm -hmm. embellish it, cover over it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, one of of the people that in the, in the process of developing the talk for, for the the retreat that I came across was Eileen Fisher and her work with, with, uh, just kind of keeping her stuff still it's still in the in the you know in the line so they take she takes in her old garments from that people donate back to her and then they cut them up and the designers that worked on that project they they almost got excited whenever they saw a weird stain on it they're like yes we could do something with this like, <laughs> you know, it, it became a creative challenge for them and i think that that, that it's the same for us too like what can you do with it? You could dye it. You could put an applique over it. You could mm-hmm. embroider over it. I mean, there's so mm-hmm. many, there's so many different things that you can do. So, if you see a diamond in the rough, just, just, just go for it. Just go for it. Yeah. Right, right. So embrace the mess. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that was a question from Linda. So thank you very much for asking that question, Linda. We appreciate it. Um, we have another one. Oh, it's uh, specifically for Elizabeth. Uh, and we'd like to know, is your necklace a refashion? It is not. No, um, I don't know. I bought it on Etsy. I, I, I love my mom. My mom is a lace lady and she passed down her love of lace to me. So whenever <laughs> I see lace, I'm like, yay, lace. So, yes, I didn't. No, it's not a refashion. It could be, but it's yeah. not. <laughs> And that does bring up an interesting point too. It's it's not necessarily just clothing. You can refashion something that you have, buttons, whatever, and make it into jewelry or other things as well. Mm-hmm. And we also have a question from the fabulous Anita. <laughs> Do you have any recommendations for websites to visit or YouTube channels that teach refashioning for beginners? Does anyone teach the details from A to Z besides Elizabeth pretty soon? <laughs> Um, cool, cool Lerpa. She's out there. She's got a really big channel and, but I don't know. It's, it's really funny because I don't think, I don't know that there's anybody that that's showing. I mean, everything's very project oriented, you know, to to actually be thinking about like the, the way to go about it is, is, is a little bit, it's, it's a little bit bigger. Um, the renegade seamstress she has a book and she has a book that's beth beth huntington um i think she's kind of gone it her, her blog has gone a little bit different way in the past few years but 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 she she does a really good job of explaining like hey i did i took this and i put it with this and i put it with this and she talks a little bit more about the, the deconstruction aspect of it and deconstruction is it's it's a funny thing because it's kind of a Per project basis, like what are you going to do with it, and how do you take it apart, and are there better ways for you to take it apart? And it kind of it just a lot of it depends. And Tisa probably has some awesome ideas for that since you do alterations. Pump tell us all the the ninja tricks for deconstructing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and there's also, next week we have uh, Sherry from Confessions of a Refashionista coming on. Exactly. And um, she's got a couple of like ebooks and things and she's got so many refashions on her sites that you know something there might inspire you and she does talk about how she makes them as well. So like, I think, yeah, there's just, she does them in kind of in groups. So that in itself might help in a kind of, cause you're right, they're all different every like, Sometimes it's the actual garment that you get that inspires the project. Um, but yeah, at least those are kind of grouped, so that might be helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes. Let me ask you something. So speaking of, because you come more from the alteration side of it, but yet that can still be um, a refashion or upcycle or repurpose. So how do you see alterations tying into refashioning? How do you make it work? Well, it, the way I see it, it ties in, it's really like brother, sister, 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 you know, because like you said, with alterations, it's all a matter of deconstructing and putting it back together. So depending, like Elizabeth said, depending on what it is that you are, you know, refashioning, you may just have to, not may, you will have to do alterations to it as well. So mm -hmm. to me, it, it, it all blends in hand in hand, like I said, like brother and sister. Right. Because a lot of times we see, alter when we think of alterations, we think of hemming something, cutting something off, shortening something, adding something in, fitting something. But altering is just literally changing something from one state to the other, right? Right. So basically that's what we're doing, right? Just altering the state of something. So one time you said something one time, Elizabeth, and, and I'm, I can't remember if it was in the tree retreat or on the in the group, but you were saying that um, instead of changing something, say like it's a skirt, instead of making a skirt into a different skirt, just change the whole state of it, you know, yeah. change it to something completely different, which is what we're trying to stretch our imaginations for, right? Yeah, so I, I like that. Yeah, I'm it, 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 It's the same thing. Like I, um, I came across some men's shirts, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to ch like you say change the state of it, but actually make it look the same. So they um, basically changed the skirts and made them into changed the shirts and made them into skirts. Oh, yeah. Wow. And, yeah, and it, it. I wish I had a picture that I could show you, but it was basically taking three men's business type shirts mm -hmm. and sewing them or refashioning them and altering them in a way, and you made them into skirts, and they were so cute. And if I had a picture, I, I would show you. But it's it's the same thing. You can refashion pretty much anything, mm -hmm. and 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 turn it into whatever whatever it is that you want to do. You, you, the imagination can go, I mean, the sky's the limit. The sky's yeah. the limit. Yep. And, and even I'm, just turning it upside down, like um, like yeah. kind of along the lines of what Elizabeth was saying, how you can you know, look at it in a different way, turn something upside down. Um, this shirt is, was uh, like a dress shirt, and this is the actual hem. This is the placket, and um, and it was just like a striped shirt, but you can put it together in a, a oh, completely wow. so the sides, bottom of the side seams here. You can put it together in a completely different way. Um, just by, like Elizabeth said, just, you know, putting it on head, having a little thing, but not leaving it as it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. X, X into Y, not X into X. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like and, and, and to me, like you said, refashioning is basically thinking outside the box. Totally. Mm -hmm. That's pretty totally. much what it is. You, you're going to take a garment and you are going to think outside the box and flip it into something totally different. And while doing that, you will have to alter and maneuver and, you know, um, whatever it is that you're going to do. But that's, that's basically what it is, thinking yeah. outside the box. Yeah. And I don't remember which one of you said it, but um, I think it was you, Don, that it's not limited to clothes either you know uh using something for home decor like uh, you were speaking about men's shirts and so i had a friend of mine she's also a custom um clothing alteration specialist but um her she had a client whose daughter passed i think it was and she had a lot of her shirts and a lot of her like sweatshirts and things like that that she wanted so she actually had them turned into pillows 
So you can use those, you know, just take uh, items and uh, upcycle and repurpose them for something else usable. You know what I'm saying? You might not be able to use them for shirts, but use them for pillows. Uh, turn a piece them together and make them into a bed, uh, bed cover, a duvet or something like that. So it, it is a matter of, like you said, of just thinking outside the box, you know. And I think and then it turns into a keepsake. Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. So uh, I've even had some things, um, some keepsake pieces. You know, like I don't know if you remember, like the little teddy bears that they bought yay high or whatnot. You can actually use the garments from you know your loved one's clothing or whatnot, and just create a teddy bear. Just stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's different things to think of um, to use those pieces for to keep them you know, for a long time. Yeah. Now, there are some misconceptions and negative connotations when you hear refashioning. So often you'll hear things like thrifting, all oh, that's dirty, or um, the hot topic of if you're thrifting is just people taking things that are bigger than themselves and making them smaller. They're stealing clothing from people with larger sizes. That's another um, in, issue as well um and some people are like i like to sew using a pattern and fabric so they have no interest as well but th then again you can get um sheets you can get um blankets and it's not like y you can wash them you know like it's it's not the end of the world do you guys have anything to say about some of those misconceptions and what you found um on the on the dirty aspect that that's what washing machines are for and also and also baking soda let's talk about baking soda <laughs> just dump it in the just dump it in the wash and just let it soak in the baking soda and then and then it's fine it's totally fine totally fine <laughs> um and yeah the 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 stealing clothes from other people it that 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 one's just so sad to me i'm like ah. Oh. I, I just, I don't know how to, I never know how to respond to that. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, like, you know, if you find fabric that's cool and everybody has had equal opportunity to, like, go and buy it. And so if they're, you know, that if right there. somebody's reaching for it, I'm not going to take it out of there. That would be dirty. Right, <laughs> right. Well, and that's the way I see it, too. I'm glad you said that, Elizabeth, because, you know, everybody has the opportunity to purchase it. I mean, there's nothing that says, you know, this person should buy it or that person should buy it. You know, it's free game. Who's to say, you know, yeah, I might look like I have, you know, a whole bunch of money or whatever the case may be. But the truth of the matter is maybe I don't. You know, maybe where I get my clothes from and recycle them is the thrift store. You just, you, you know what I'm saying? You just can't put a, and I think that's what we do with stereotype. And I think um, because the thrift stores are thrift stores and they're meant for people who maybe can't afford a whole lot, but that doesn't mean to say, you know, anybody else can't buy it, refashion it and make it our own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that, that's a huge misconception. As far as the dirty part, you know, that's why you wash it. That's why you uh, throw some paint on it, you know, <laughs> make it completely Hi. different, you know. Um, the upsizing, the, you know, everything is meant to either size up or size down. So there again, that's where your imagination comes in at. It doesn't always have to be you get big fabric, I mean, big pieces. Yeah, I like what you said, Elizabeth. Everything you see is fabric. You don't necessarily see garments, you see fabric. So yeah, why if, if it is a lot of fabric, then I want it. You know, I want to use. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I don't see anything wrong with that. If if I find good quality cashmere knit, I'm not passing it by. And if right. I have to buy it, it's not good. <laughs> because if I went to a fabric store, it would be forty dollars a yard. You know, yes. but so if I gotta work a little bit harder to to dye it and maybe only have just a, a little tiny scrap of that. So I got it, I'm still going to use it because I like the I like how it feels, you know, and I like the fact that I didn't pay forty dollars a yard for it. Right, right. <laughs> now let me ask you this: I have a good question for any either one to answer this, but probably more so you, Elizabeth. But I know you do a lot of refashioning, you do a lot of thrifting. Does any of your things that you created end back in the thrift store? No, I'm not into that. I, I, no, no, I really, I really try and avoid that whole situation. Um, I, 
I, I mean, like my blood, sweat, and tears have gone into something. And <laughs> <laughs> if something didn't work out, I'm going to figure out a way to either, I, I really try and be as zero waste as I possibly can because I just really hate wasting good fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just hate wasting the fabric. So I'll, I'll turn it into something for one of my kids or um, upsize it through something for my charity work. Um, just just something. And I'm taking my label out. I'm taking my label out, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you those two. <laughs> I think yes. that the environment thing is is a good point as well you know like you don't you just have to look at the weather lately it makes you think about it more and a lot of um the clothing it goes to the thrift store it doesn't all, always make it to the end customer they send them off in big batches they get sold to somebody huge lots get sent overseas and things so it's not necessarily that you're taking something from that community these could very well be things that are practically thrown away even after the thrift store and um, the whole sizing thing, because sometimes you're getting things, you might be getting two or three things that are, that and putting them together and upsizing them. It's not necessarily that um, you go in and always get things that are of uh, a larger size as well. And don't forget, it's your closet. It's the waters that you haven't done anything with and it's just sitting in a corner because something wasn't quite right. Or in your partner's closet, like my poor husband. Um, I, like I went, I'm like, yeah, any of the dress shirts you're not wearing, hun? <laughs> I need right. a dress shirt. Right. I had my eye on a couple, like, you didn't choose those ones, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it's, there's, it's a lot more than you think. And I think it's uh, about time that we do kind of open our minds up, like whether it's to what is fabric um, or to how it can be used. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's a great idea. Um, I'm glad you brought that point up, um, Don, because we think thrifting, we always think going out to the thrift store or the Goodwill, but you can go right in your closet shopping. <laughs> like, uh, Anita, I don't know if Anita Morris is still on here, but she did um, this series um, a few months back clearing out a closet and, you know, all of this, you know, unpacking, getting rid of stuff that you don't really need and just getting rid of it. But instead of, of literally getting rid of it first then go through it and see, is there something I can refashion, something yeah. I can recycle, something I can, you know, change into something else. So you might have a, a whole thrift store right there in your own closet, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? And majority I, of us do. Yeah. Majority of us do. I have a lot of clients that come in here into the shop and they, and that's, that's what they do. They, they, they love something so much that they don't want to get rid of it. So they try to figure out a way to, okay, to, yeah. Yeah, to, exactly, to make it work. And, and not only that, I encourage them. I say, you know, go to the thrift store. Myself, I, I have a client that he wanted to change the buttons on his shirts. I said, okay, I went and I found some buttons from whether it was Joanne's or Michael's, well, wherever the buttons were, he didn't like them. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go to the thrift store. I went to the thrift store and found a shirt that had the perfect buttons for what he wanted, got it, and was done. I mean, it was, it, it, let me tell you, to me, the thrift store is a gold mine. Absolutely. It, it really, it's like really, a treasure hunting. Yeah. yeah. It, it really, really is. It's a gold mine in there. Yep. Well, speaking of treasure hunt, um, I don't know how much time we have left or whatnot, but we do have something exciting coming up that Elizabeth will be talking about. I don't know if we'll talk about it in this show, but uh, we're going to do a little bit of treasure hunting um, starting this month and finishing up next month. So, uh, yeah. So do we have time to talk about that, Dawn? Yes, I would love um, to hear more about that. So um, that kind of wraps up our, like, table talk i hope that was helpful to people to kind of see things in a different light and we're just going to mention a couple things about the so much talent group now if you haven't heard about so much talent it is a fabulous group there's so many talented helpful supportive ladies i see people all the time saying ah oh, i don't know how to do this and people will send them links to uh tutorials give them actual advice, show, share pictures, and talk about inspirational, so many fabulous things. And they have challenges every month and um, they're a lot of fun. I won a prize once. <laughs> so yeah, definitely check them out. It's a private group, but if you write them and you're a sewist, um, you normally accept most people who sew, right? 
right. yes so yeah. yeah i'd love to hear about this uh wasn't hide and seek it was a treasure hunt <laughs> Okay, so I want to challenge everybody to go and make uh, a new sweater, a new sweater, okay? So go and find yourself a nice sweater, a nice sweater, okay? Like, go find the cashmere. Go find the cashmere, people, because you're going you're gonna to refashion it, but go find the cashmere, okay? <laughs> Okay, it's worth it. <laughs> and you know, and just and if you don't know what cashmere feels like, just go and look at the labels on the on the inside of your sweaters when you go to the thrift store. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll find a lot of you'll find a lot of yardage on cashmere sweaters in the men, in the men. Um, and what's nice too about men is that they don't have any shape, they don't have shaping in them like they do for women. So you're going to get a lot more yardage out of them. So. Find a sweater that you like, and then find um, at least one more sweater, and and maybe some contrast fabric, and and we're gonna slice and dice it, and mm -hmm. make one of those one of those cardigans that that I kind of gave you some right. gave you shots of. So, <laughs> I'll be, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, live in the group um, later on. I actually went to the thrift store on Saturday. I didn't find anything because it's a little bit it's a little bit before our before before my 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 store starts putting out all their sweaters so i had like five sweaters to choose from I'm like what <laughs> every week and what what is going on so i'm gonna have to keep i'm gonna have to go and search i do have some other stuff but yeah well i'm looking just, forward to it it's gonna be a lot of fun because i think we're gonna up the ante a little bit i think we'll talk about I'll, I'll pick your head elizabeth because i elizabeth's gonna uh spearhead this but it's kind of like the challenge we did, the um, thrift store challenge we did a while back. For those of you that were in the group where we, I gave you a budget of $25 to go in the thrift store and find whatever you can find and um, remake the stuff. And so it's going to kind of be like that. You know, you're going to have some rules. So um, so we're looking forward to it. Does anyway. it have to be cashmere? Just to, I know cashmere is like the what you're aiming for. No, but as long as it's a sweater that you like. Yeah, just some something that you like. I like I I like I like the cashmere. <laughs> <laughs> really? Colorado is cold. So I need I need cashmere in my life, and I can't afford the cashmere. So when I find it at the thrift store, I'm like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> I just want to find the good stuff, right? Right. <laughs> but you know, and, speaking of, there are people, there are women that actually I know, and I are people that I've been around. They will actually go into Goodwill thrift stores. I mean, I'm talking about people, and, and maybe I shouldn't say this. Uh, it might, I might need to scratch that one. But <laughs> they will actually go in and shop name brand items. You know what yeah. I'm saying? and find these things and um so a lot of people you'd be surprised they don't shop in these expensive stores they go into like the goodwill the uh salvation armies and they find these name brand items and repurpose them or they just clean them up and wear them yeah you know yeah. so it, it's a good place to start definitely yeah. and i was hoping maybe you could tell us a little bit about you just had a retreat recently and we heard that uh, Elizabeth was reading a book to everyone and showed off some cool stuff, but um, how else, how did it go? <laughs> oh my goodness, we had a blast. And I think Elizabeth was the highlight. Well, I won't say she was a highlight. Everybody we had was awesome. Um, they were, they were totally there was uh, Ayana Glaze with Ayana Glaze Designs, mm -hmm. and she shared with us um, repurposing a t-shirt. And that was kind of unexpected, but at, that worked kind of with the theme of everything. And uh, she showed us how to repurpose a T-shirt, really how to create your dress from a T-shirt. And um, she, we all made jewelry. We had our own jewelry that we created. Um, we, uh, Elizabeth, of course, uh, she, I don't, she didn't even show you, maybe on the next segment that we do, she'll show you some of that stuff from the retreat, but it was awesome. The stuff that she brought and what she talked about, oh my gosh, it was just, we were all like this. Really, I want to go recycle <laughs> something now. I want to return. <laughs> and um, it was just a lot of good information. And um, the last person that we had was Monica. That's so Monica. Uh, so your view, and she was awesome. Um, 
I mean, everybody, it, w- it was just a great time. It was a good time of fellowship, a good time of just everybody coming together. Everybody shared information. Uh, we also had an impromptu visitor, a uh, guest speaker, and that was uh, Nikki Griffin from uh, Sewing Your Style. And she actually taught us about uh, properly taking measurements and how to create a moulage for yourself. And she actually did moulages for about three people. And a moulage is basically just a garment, uh, like a, a test garment or, of your own body. You know, how you see the um, the covering for the mannequin was well, basically like your body covering. And from that, you can create a um, your own blocks, your pattern, your uh, bodice blocks. So, I mean, we got way more than what we expected from this retreat. And uh, But just to get around people, uh, Carol, the fabric whisperer who was there, um so many people were there so it was exciting but what was your takeaway um elizabeth you know it was it's just such a special group it's such a special group like everybody just came ready to learn ready to just be a part of just the whole the whole situation and we just it, it was it's so i think this is what what makes so much talent really special is that there's never this thought that you have this much knowledge and you have this much knowledge and I can't talk to you if you have this much knowledge. It's like everybody just shares freely and encourages freely. And it's it, it, it was we laughed so hard and it was just <laughs> great. It was great. It was really sweet. It was really sweet. That was the three things that I did take away from is that there was no age barrier. Yeah. Because it went from, I think the oldest we had there was like 73 years old. And I heard the theme of throughout the evening was I started not to come because of whatever the case was, but they did anyway. And um, so she came, uh, there was, I mean, such a diversity, like you said, of skills, the skill levels was very diverse. And different, um, it just different, yeah. just different specialties too. Right. Yeah, because yeah, uh, Angela uh, Whitaker Bowser, she was a big help for a lot of the ladies because she her specialty is sewing, bridal, and formal wear, and so she gave a lot of information. But everybody was very helpful. We learned a lot. We shopped a lot. <laughs> uh, I think the highest amount of fabric that somebody purchased during that retreat was seventy three yards of fabric. Oh my wow. goodness! <laughs> seventy three yards of fabric. And wow. so, yeah, <laughs> but it, it was a lot of fun. We have a question here. Uh, where are your retreats held? Well, that's the beauty of it. Our retreats um, travel. So last year, uh, Tissa was at the retreat last year, which we had a lot of fun with that. So much fun. That was in my hometown, Augusta, Georgia. This year's retreat was in Atlanta, uh, outside of Atlanta, Hampton, Georgia. Next year, our retreat will be in New York City. So we plan to shop the garment district and uh, plan to have a lot of fun with that. And the following year, we have plans to do a uh, sewing cruise. So yeah, wow. very excited. Very yeah. exciting. Yeah, so it, it travels. <laughs> very cool. Um, yes, so we're past time. Um, so this is the time of night when I have to say goodbye and thank you guys for coming on. But I mean, at least I feel better about you leaving because I know in two weeks time, you'll be back because yeah. discussing alterations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you for having us, Don. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes. I really do appreciate it, guys. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in two weeks. Okay, well, uh, we'll say goodbye to you. And then I'll just mention who's coming up next week. Um, so thanks again, ladies. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> bye. Okay. Um, yeah, so really quickly, um, next week, Sherry from Confessions of a Refashionista is coming. We're thrilled that she's going to be joining us. And then on August 20th, the ladies from So Much Talent will be back joining us about alterations. Um, I also wanted to say a special thank you to everyone at, that was at Nail Pattern Boldness Day this last past week. Um, I had an absolute blast. It's um, just like Alethea said, the sewing community are amazing. It doesn't matter what skill level you're at. Um, but yeah, everyone was just so friendly, so nice, and it was so much fun. And hearing that those ladies are going to be hitting the garment district next year, whew, 
they're going they're in for a surprise it's going to be a lot of fun i can just see it so um thanks to peter from uh mail the blog mail pattern boldness for holding um last weekend's event and for all of the people there for being so friendly and thank you guys for watching tonight i really do appreciate um seeing the comments in the side and seeing the questions down below and we hope to see you next week so have a great evening everyone